Hi, I'm Chell Lussie, and I'm with the HVAC department, and today we're going to have an introduction to electricity, specifically magnetism. To start with, all items are made up of matter. Matter is made up of molecules. Examples of matter would be a desk, water, natural gas, the chair. This matter is made up of molecules. Molecules, for example, a molecule of water would be H2O. A molecule of natural gas or methane gas is CH4. These molecules are then made up of individual atoms. The water molecule is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. The molecule of methane gas is made up of one atom of carbon and four atoms of hydrogen. The atoms themselves are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons have a positive charge. Electrons have a negative charge. And neutrons have no charge. When dealing with the atom, it is made up of a nucleus which contains the protons and the neutrons. That nucleus is surrounded by the electrons. An example of that would be a hydrogen atom. I'm sorry, a helium atom. The helium atom has two protons, two neutrons, which have no charge, and two electrons with a negative charge that circle or orbit the nucleus. So again, the nucleus is in the center, made up of protons and neutrons, and it is orbited by electrons with a negative charge. Again, to show the parts of an atom is this example. What this example shows is that the nucleus now has many protons and many neutrons and therefore has many electrons. And these electrons are in different levels or orbitals or orbits. Some people would say shells, S-C-H-E-L-L-S. There are different layers or orbitals to the electrons as they circle, circle around the nucleus. Thinking of those orbits and those shells of electrons, the different layers are able to hold different amounts of electrons. The very first layer closest to the nucleus can hold a maximum of two electrons. So that would be our first orbit. The second orbit, or layer, or shell, if you will, would be able to contain eight electrons. Now remember, these are maximum electrons in the orbit. The third orbit would be able to hold 18 electrons. The fourth orbit, 32. And we could also take a look at another table to help us describe this. And this may be a little difficult to see, but what we're trying to show here, what we have is a periodic table of the elements, and hydrogen has one electron in the first orbit. Helium has 
two electrons in the first orbit. When we get to lithium, element three, which will have three electrons, there are two in the first orbit and one in the next orbit or the second orbit, being that the first can only hold two. Therefore, the third electron must go to the second orbit, which will hold eight max. As we come down to another example, let's drop down the chart a little bit. Here's copper, element number 29, has two electrons in the first orbit, eight electrons in the second orbit, 18 electrons in the third orbit. Notice how those orbits are full. And the last or 29th electron is in the third or the uh, fourth orbit. So the first three are full, and the last one only has one electron in it, and that's copper. That's element 29. with 29 protons, 29 electrons, and the resulting neutrons. Atoms have polarity. If an atom has an equal number of protons and an equal number of electrons, then the atom is thought of to be neutral or to have no charge. There is an equal number of positive with an equal number of negative. Therefore, it's a neutral atom. If, however, the atom has one extra electron, then that atom is said to be a negative ion. It has one extra negative. Remember that protons are positive and electrons are negative. If I have extra negative, I am a negative ion. If I, have, if I am short one electron, then I would be referred to as a positive ion because I have more positive than I have negative. I'm short one electron. The protons cannot change. The number of protons is what gives the element its characteristics. As I mentioned, copper element 29 has 29 protons. If copper only had 28 elect, uh, protons, it would not be copper. It would be, as a matter of fact, element 28 is nickel. So it would no longer be copper, it would be nickel. Therefore, the number of protons cannot change. It's simply the number of electrons that can change. Electricity simply is the movement of these electrons that we're talking about. As I move electrons from one atom to another, I have electricity. So in electricity, the positive and negative elements, the protons and the neutrons, will attract to each other. Let's look at it this way. Let's, let's avoid the proton and electron, let's just say a positive charge and a negative charge will attract to each other. So for example, if an atom is a positive ion, in other words, it's missing one electron, it is more positive than it is negative, and you have an, an atom that is negatively charged, it has an extra electron, therefore it's more negative than positive, those two atoms would be attracted to one another. If we have two positives, two positives would repel away from each other, and two negatives would also repel away from each other. This is where we get the idea that likes repel and opposites attract. So opposites are attracting, likes are repelling, positives, likes are repelling if they're negative. Now, the electron itself spins on an axis. Our Earth does this. Our Earth spins on an axis at a slight angle as well as orbits the sun. Electrons do the same thing. As the nucleus made up of positive and neutral exists, the electrons are circling that nucleus and they are the negative. And as those electrons circulate or orbit the nucleus, they spin on an axis. And they circulate or circle or orbit 
the nucleus, and spin on an axis. The spinning on an axis causes the electrons to take on magnetism, as does our world, our Earth. So electrons are really nothing more than little magnets. So here's a picture representing a spinning electron, and you'll notice that it has little arrows showing it spinning, and it has a south polarity and a north polarity. So while electrons are what electricity is made up of, they are also magnets. So as we move electrons around, we're moving magnets around also.